Hi all, how are you? It's been a long time, I didn't meet you, I was on a vacation and now I'm back. So uh, let's talk a little bit about XSLT. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, you know, nodes, how to traverse nodes in uh, you know, XSLT. There are nodes on XML and then we want to traverse through the nodes in XSLT. So uh, mainly there, is like, there are like uh, you know, up nodes, down nodes and then sibling nodes. I'm going to talk a little bit more in this video. So let's get started. So this is the post blog post for this uh, video. And I have given the link for the video in the description of this video. A link for this article in the description of the video. Okay. So uh, these are the topics I'm going to cover. Traverse up node. Traverse up node with a different example. And a traverse down node and uh, how to traverse the sibling nodes okay so as you know i have given the link uh, to to practice the uh, you know accessibility online okay here it is okay so the first one how to traverse up node this is a uh, task so what does it mean my first of all let me tell you what is the uh, xml file we are dealing with here so we have a row right in each row, we have employee information and their dependent information. Okay, so dependents are spouse or children. Okay, there are two children and then one spouse. And how can we traverse? Uh, you know, for example, we are on the level level of uh, dependents, and then we want to traverse up. You know, how can we do that? Okay, so let's see. This is the expected uh, you know output. The employee ID is one one zero zero one, and when we are printing the dependent information and we want to access the employee ID, or in this case we are accessing employee ID, maybe if you want we can access the employee name as well. Okay, so let's see. So I'll first run the uh, you know XSLT, and then I'll show you. Uh, I'll explain you how to read this. Okay, I have copied the XML and I'm going to copy the XSLT and I'm going to run. So see here, we were able to access the employee ID. Um, when we are accessing the dependent information, we were able to access the employee ID, which is one level up. So let's see how we were able to achieve that. So we have two for each. One is to go through all the employees and then one more for each to uh, you know traverse through all the dependents in that employee okay now we were able to uh, print print the dependent name and to print the employee id which is one level up we are using dot dot slash that means dot dot slash will take you one level up it's uh, similar to the command line uh, you know cmd in windows two dots that you know, slash will take you one level up in the folder structure in the similar way in the xml structure also uh two dot slash will take you one level up and then because on we are on one level up we want to access we can access all this information we are now accessing only employee so that's how that's the example okay let's see second example uh, in this example, all, all I'm showing is how to traverse two levels up, right? So two levels up is nothing but we are repeating slash, dot dot slash two times. So that's it. I'm not going to uh, run this XSLT. Uh, you can run on your own. Now coming to the next, which is traversing, traversing the down, down node. Uh, we always we have been always using the for each but for this time we are not going to use for each and how can we traverse down the nodes okay that's what i'm going to show you so see here we have employee information in the row and then we have separated the spouse and children in a different nodes one is spouse node and other is children node okay so and I have clearly given uh, example how to get to the spouse information, children information, and then first child information, second child, third child, and how to get to the first child information in an alternative approach. 
how to get to the second child information in the alternative approach then how to get to the last child information last but one child information and all children information uh, you know who is greater than one that means we are excluding one in this case we are excluding one but whatever the condition so all these conditions i'm going to show you um, i'm going to run this first and then i'll go through the logic I have copied the XML. Now I am going to copy the XSLD and transform the XML. So we got all the spouse information, children information. So if you observe, we got both the children information here. Now how to separate one child, one child information? We'll see here. Okay. So. Uh, the logic is this is how the logic is i'm going to show you here to get to the spouse information we are traversing down so spouse followed by dependent followed by dependent name so if you observe the xml the spouse dependent and dependent name that's for spouse but for children we have two nodes one is dependent there are two dependents right two children so how does it work if we use the same logic for uh, you know children right this is children and then the same thing dependent and dependent name so if you observe the output we got uh, you know two three dependents three children all the children information is being repeated right and then uh, this is the one approach I, I, I really don't care about all the children i just want a specific children let's like just say first child or second child how can i do that or third child or whatever the child right all we have to do is we have to identify where is it being repeated so is it dependent is being repeated or is it children is being repeated in this case because the dependent is being repeating right so we want to give number one number two here so like this number one we have put the one in the square bracket and that's how we were able to get to the first children second child and third child and there is a different approach instead of using this this seems to be a little bit simpler but uh, there is one another approach just for your information we can give exclusively position equal to one position equal to two like that right and then sometimes we don't know how many uh you know in a child nodes are there so just say we all we care about is the last node right first node is easy because we always give one but we don't know what is the last node right we don't know it's a there are four nodes five nodes ten nodes 21 nodes or whatever all we care about is the last node in that case we can use the last and then similarly last but one is minus one like this okay and not only that we can use equal to we can give e greater than less than that kind of conditions as well so for example we want to get to the, all the children uh, who is who is greater than one we, we don't want the first child but we want all the other children so this is this is the greater than symbol and then greater than one okay so just try this exercise on your own and then uh, you'll see the results uh, the data here is little bit different uh, so you can try you can see what is the difference you can try to understand that right and coming to the last uh, example preceding uh, siblings and following siblings so there are two kinds of siblings to the node right let's just say in this example all we have is only employee information and we are in we are on this level and then we want to see all the preceding our siblings so that means we are accessing this and for example we are on this and then we want to see all the preceding means we are able to access both of them similarly succeeding is something like if you are in this we are accessing the next one so how to traverse that first let's uh, let me show you the output 
right? We are on the first, uh, let's just say this is first employee, right? And then first preceding sibling, because this is the first one, we don't have any preceding sibling. Second preceding sibling, and then count of preceding siblings is zero. And then first following sibling is 1002, second following sibling is 1003, and the count of following siblings is two. That makes sense, right? So the similarly, you can you can go through all these examples and you can easily understand that. Okay, so let's see how can we uh, achieve that. First, let me run this, and then we'll I've copied the XML, and I'm going to copy the XSLD, and I run the transform XML. This is the output. Okay, now we'll see the logic, logic part of it. The first preceding sibling is derived like this. I'm going to show a little bit here. See here, we are exclusively giving the preceding sibling followed by two columns. And then this is a row traversing. And similar to the a previous example, in the square bracket, we give one. That means the first preceding sibling. And uh, two means second preceding sibling. And for example, we want to count all the preceding siblings, right? Preceding sibling followed by two columns, uh, two column and star. Star means all, right? And then we are wrapping this in the count. That means we are counting all the preceding siblings, right? In a similar way, um, the succeeding siblings is also something like the following. We call it following sibling. Is a similar way. And then we are counting all the following siblings. So that's the that's how we can get to the uh, siblings information. So yeah, that's it for uh, in this video. So I hope you learned something today interesting and you're going to use it in your day-to-day uh, -day life. And uh, thank you for watching my videos. Have a nice day, bye.